Hello everyone and welcome to this Sections Project Solution. I remember you that you can download all the code for this project solution from these sections downloadable resources here on Udemy and from my GitHub profile at the address github.com slash pymic00. So here we are on Visual Studio Code and as you can see there is no file opened in the workbench, instead the terminal is up and running. Django's development server is running and that's because I've been busy adding some instances to our database. I've created a couple of new manufacturer instances. I've added Lenovo, Sony and an inactive manufacturer that I flagged as inactive and I've also added some products. And that's because for this unit's assessment project you were asked to create two new endpoints for our online store API. One to show a list with all the active manufacturer instances on our database and another one to show all the details of a single manufacturer instance based on the primary key passed by the user with products included. Therefore, I've added some records in the database in order for us to have some instances to work with. We've already mentioned how the two new endpoints that we need to create are going to be very similar to the one that we've created in the previous lectures. And as a matter of fact, most of the code that we're going to write is going to be very similar to the one that we've already written. So let's start by writing the view for our first endpoint. The one to show a list with all the manufactured instances that are active in our database. So I can go ahead and copy the product list function based view. Can pass it right here. And I'm going to change the code. So it's not going to be product list, but manufacturer list. And I can copy this one right here, right here. And of course here. And of course the query set is going to be different. So I'm going to need manufacturer class. It's going to be manufacturer.objects.filter with active equals true. I'm going to delete this comment right here and the one right below. So we're getting the query set of all the manufactured objects that have been flagged as active. We're then taking the values of all these instances and we're using these values to create a data dictionary that will feed into the JSON response class to create a proper JSON response that we're then returning to the client. So we now need to define a URL path, meaning we need to define the actual endpoint, right? To call our manufacturer list view that we can actually import. So here I can do something like this. I can just go on a new line. Like so even though it's best practice to keep an alphabetical order, so I can actually bring manufacturer list on top and I can then close the tuple like so. So let's define our endpoint. I'm going to copy the products endpoint right here, but it's going to be manufacturers and the name is going to be manufacturer list and it's going to call the manufacturer list view. So let's now create the second view that we need. We can just go ahead and copy the product detail function code. And just as we did for manufacturer list, we also need to modify the code for this function. So it's going to be manufacturer detail. And I can go ahead and change product to manufacturer. Same thing here. We clearly don't need an instance of product, but an instance of manufacturer. And of course, we can also, we need to change the accept clause. Regarding the data dictionary, we can actually keep name because, as you remember, we've got a name field and we've also got a location field and an active field. So here I can change this to manufacturer.name. Then we've got location. So location is going to be manufacturer.location where manufacturer, of course, is our instance of manufacturer. Then we've got active, so manufacturer.active, 
our Boolean flag. And we also need to show a list with all the products in our database that were made by the same manufacturer. And because we've linked the two models using products as related name for the inverse relationship, we can now get a query set with all the related products by using its related name. So here we can do manufacturer products equals and I can do something like manufacturer dot products dot all. And we can now do something similar to what we've done right here in the lists. So this is going to be products. And this is going to be a list of the values of the manufacturer products query set. We also need to change the error message. So it's going to be manufacturer not found if there is no correlation between the past primary key and the records in our database. So we can finally link our view to a URL path in order to create a new endpoint. So we need to import the view first and again following alphabetical order, I can do like so. Then here I can just copy this endpoint right here. So it's going to be manufacturer detail and it's going to trigger the manufacturer detail function. And of course, the endpoint itself is going to be different. So we're now finally ready to reload our development server and give our new endpoints a try. So I'm just going to minimize the terminal and let's go back to Chrome. So let's go to localhost slash API. And of course, here we now have also our two new endpoints. So let's check manufacturer list first. So slash API slash manufacturers slash and here it is our JSON response that as you can see only shows the manufacturers that have been flagged as active. So as you can see here on Chrome, there is another window that is open and is a window of the homepage of the website jsonformatter.org. So as we've said in the previous lectures, the JSON file format is really cool because it's both human readable and very fast for machines to process. But it is also clear that it can be a pain to actually get a sense of all the information that are shown, considering that all the new lines and the tabs get stripped away in order to make the response as small and therefore fast as possible. And so when getting a JSON response as the one shown here, you oftentimes want to use a JSON formatter to show its content in a much more pleasant way. As we'll see in the following sections, Django's framework also provides this kind of functionality via the so-called browsable API, which of course we will learn to use. So let's make another example. Let's say we want to get all the details of Sony, which is a manufacturer with ID 2, as we can see. So let's go back to the first window and let's make a get request to the endpoint API manufacturers 2, which is its primary key. And here we get all the details for this specific instance. So let's go back to our formatter. Let's pass our JSON. And as you can see, we now get all the details for the Sony instance, included the product list. And considering that I haven't added any image for neither the PlayStation or the Vio, we just get an empty string. So that was it for the solution of this section's assessment project. And this was also the last video for the Web APIs section. We're now finally ready to start using Django REST Framework in the next section, Django REST Framework Level 1. See you there!